All right, so we just learned how to do repetition with while loops and with for loops. Uh, so let's play a little game. Let's play mixing everything together and um, and cranking it up. Okay, so let me show you an example. With the for loop that we created before, a for loop that just prints a simple sequence of numbers from 0 to 9 to the console, we can print 10 numbers from 0 to 9 to the console on a row, for example, okay? And um, the idea is that we're doing a row of numbers because I'm using here right line, which basically creates a new line character after it prints this to the console, it prints to the console. If I were to change this to just simple write, what I would do is instead of writing a character and then going to a new line, then I would basically uh, keep all the characters on the same line. I don't add this new line character, I don't jump to a new line after uh, I finish printing, okay? And if I wanted to give, make it even a little nicer, I could add a white space to this, um, I could add a white space to this writing in line, or I could just say, well, instead of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write, and then I'm also going to simple write, I'm going to simple write a white line character, um, after each one of these sequences, all right? And then I have created a sequence of numbers that is linear. It's like a row. Um, it's like a row of numbers, all right? But that's, this is great. It's fun. But this is a little bit of the problem with simple for loops. They're very linear. They're, they're only one-dimensional in a way. So with this technique, I can only write to the console either a column or a row of numbers. But what if what I wanted was to print a matrix of numbers? I wanted to have both rows and columns, almost as if this was an, uh, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. What if I wanted to have the two dimensions? What if I wanted to print a block of, this, of these numbers? Would I have to do this? Would I have to copy and paste this if I want like 17 rows? Would I have to copy and paste this 17 times? Well, right now it doesn't work because I haven't added a white line character. So what about, um, so I could say, well, after you have finished printing this, can you just write a new empty line? Okay. And then if I copy and paste this like three times or four times, and I can execute this, well, you can see how I'm printing this matrix of numbers. But you probably see where I'm going with this. Um, just like I don't want to be printing one line of code for each number that I want to print, I don't want to have to be copy pasting things to create repetition because this, basically, what I have created here, these four elements are basically this element repeated four times. Okay? So the idea is that I can create repetition over repetition. So if I want to do this, what I can do is I can just say, why don't I just take this block of code that prints a line of numbers like that? Why don't I not wrap all of this inside a for loop that repeats however many times, right? How about I take what I have here and I say, well, this, I'm going to wrap it inside of another for loop that I'm going to open and close here. I'm going to bring all this code inside of the for loop. And now let me create some repetition here. So for example, let me create uh, a variable called rows and row. I'm going to create it row. And that's going to be equal to, for example, um, it's going to start at zero. Then row is going to be less than, for example, uh, five. And then row is going to increase linearly by one unit, which means that um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an iteration that is going to iterate five times and is going to repeat this block of code five times. Okay. So, and if I do this, what you can see is that I have been able to repeat the numbers five times over, um, over this, uh, uh, in the console. Okay. So the idea is that what I just created is nested for loops is a for loop that executes inside of another for loop that makes it execute X amount of times. 
And the result of that is a sort of multiplication effect of this result. So if I were print, if I was printing 10 numbers to the console, and I asked the computer to repeat the operation of printing 10 numbers to the console five times, how many numbers do I end up printing to the console? 10 numbers times repeated five times is 50 numbers, right? It's the same as if I told you, can you do jumping 10 times? Can you do that five times? So how many times would you end up jumping at the end? You end up jumping 50 times. Is that correct? Right? So um, this, is, um, this is just a way of, um, of um, combining the effect of two for loops and making something that repeats, actually repeating that in itself however many times. And actually, I can do this infinitely. I can nest infinite loops in top of other loops to create this multiplication effect. It's just that, for example, in a 2D screen, very rarely do you need to uh, have more than two nested loops, one inside of the other, because it's a two-dimensional screen. If you were working in 3D, in a 3D model environment, then maybe sometimes um, a three, three nested for loops, one inside of the other, would make sense because you want to address this three-dimensionality, all right? And if you want even a bit more of fine control over this, I could declare two variables and say maximum number of rows. That's going to be, I don't know, let's say seven, okay? And then int is going to be maximum number of columns. And that's going to be, for example, 20. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, instead of hard coding, how many rows do I have? This is going to be max rows. And instead of hard coding, how many columns I have? It's going to be max columns. And now I have a program that generates 20 numbers, so 20 columns, and repeats that. Uh, nine, seven, seven times. Okay. How cool is that? Uh, and if I were to do like in the previous video where I took input from the user in the console and I asked like, how many rows do you want? How many columns do you want? Then I could take this from the user, plug them into the for loops and then get this two dimensional matrix controlled by the user. Another cool thing that we can do is, for example, um, let's say that I were to rename, uh, to rename, <clears throat> to let's say that I was to rename row. It's very typical to, um, it's very typical to, when naming nested for loops, it's very typical to name the first level for loop, to name it with the variable i. It's also very typical to name the second degree, the second level, or the or the immediate parent to name that variable j and then however many loops k uh, I, 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 j, k, I don't know what's coming next but like keep that order of lettering after the, afterwards all right so something that i could do is instead of just printing i for example that gives me the same number over and over again what i could do is i could just print for example the result of multiplying i times j and then that will give me this other structure, which is has like, you see the first row are all zeros because J is always zero. The second one is the normal one. And then this is multiplied by two, by three, by four, by five. So it's almost like the multiplication tables, one after the other, right? Uh, which I find also pretty, pretty cool. So for loops and nesting them together in a repeated structures is a very powerful technique because all of a sudden, you get to end with very simple three lines of code. I get to generate a lot of content in the screen and I can control it in a very fine tuned way. Like for example, with these external parameters. So, so nested repetitions are, um, as, again, like a super, super powerful structure. And um, I welcome you, I invite you to go uh, to stick around to this series of videos and to go to the last video on this section where we talk about flow control because uh, I will be doing uh, a lot of exercises of numerical series so printing a lot of numbers in different ways to the console and I will be doing a lot of exercises on nested for loops where I will be printing a bunch of numbers, letters and even some cool ASCII art uh, on the screen, okay? And I, in order to do that, I will be combining a lot of the techniques that we have learned before. 
I will be combining uh, nested for loops, I will be combining uh, conditional statements, I will be combining arithmetic. So I think it's going to be really, really good practice for you. Okay, so check it out. Um, it's going to be somewhere by the end of this section dedicated to flow control.